I'm going to come right out and say it. Who needs big speakers? You know, the market nowadays is ruled by small, little pipsqueak speakers, right? Active speakers, passive speakers, Bluetooth speakers. They all tend to be small with six inch or smaller woofers. There was a time. <laughs> there was a time. There was a time in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s that normal people, not just audiophile crazy people, normal people had big speakers. They had big JBLs. They had big uh, rectilinear speakers. They had Bozaks. They had Sirwin Vegas. These big monster honking speakers. A lot of people have. I remember so many of my friends, I had big speakers. My friends had big speakers. It was the norm to have big speakers if you were into music. And if you tended to play it loud at times, you probably had some big speakers, especially if you were, pardon the expression, single. So it just made me think about how this changed. So, so gradual, I guess. You could say gradual. It appeared 30, 40 years that speakers got smaller, the market for big speakers shrunk, <laughs> part of the contradiction there, but the big speaker market got tiny and fewer and fewer speakers were big. But I've been thinking about big speakers a lot over the last few years, starting with uh, the Klipsch Forte 3s, which are pretty big. Now the Cornwall 4s, which are much bigger. My experiences with the Pure Audio Project uh, Classic Trio 15s, even bigger. And, you know, living with really big speakers, as I do when I'm reviewing them, you just have this sense of, Ease. There's an effortless quality to big speakers. It's not even just that they play loud. These Cornwalls amaze me how well they play at very late night levels when I don't want to disturb my wife or my neighbors or anything. They still sound really great, played super quiet. So it's not, it's not just about loud. But loud is part of the appeal. I'm not, I'm not trying to deny that. I'm just saying that's not the main course here. People see big, they associate big equals loud. Well, can be and they have that capability but that's not the prime force here the prime force is just this unflappable low distortion sound that big speakers are capable of now to get back to my original question who needs big speakers well i know who doesn't if you live in a really small apartment, you have a very small listening room, let's say smaller than 10 by 12 feet or something, you, you shouldn't get big speakers. Small speakers are great. And the closer you get to a small speaker, the bigger it sounds. So that's always my advice. If, if you have a small space and you have small speakers, they can sound pretty big as you get close up and listen in the near field. But today it is about big speakers and that that ease that they convey that is so, so alluring to me. And the opposite is, is that when I go from a big speaker to reviewing a small speaker, it takes a period of adjustment, even if it's really good small speaker, to go, wait, 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 <laughs> this new one doesn't have a 15 inch woofer, this one has a six inch woofer. That's, that requires some reviewer recalibration of my brain going on to make that work. Um, so, uh, you know, I once wrote a piece with a similar title for CNET called Who Needs Big Speakers? And I don't even remember what the details were, but the same th thoughts were running through my head, but I hadn't had the experience of living with something really big in a long time. In the 70s, my favorite big speaker that I owned was the Snell Type A. That was big, probably even a little bigger than these Cornwalls that I have right now. And I just remember how much I love them and my wife loved them, you know, that, that was a big, that was a cherry on top that she, she loved those speakers. She was really upset when I sold those Snell A's. Um, they had the size of a refrigerator, basically, a short refrigerator, but a refrigerator. When, when you move from a speaker with a small woofer to a speaker with a big woofer, a big cabinet, or a, better yet, a big panel speaker, that sense of scale is so it just changes the expectations of what recorded music can sound like when you go from small to something large or fairly large even. It's not a subtle thing because music in real life isn't small, right? It's not, in real life, virtually all music is amplified, right? And it ain't coming out of 
six inch or four inch woofers. It's coming out of big PA speakers, right? So, and of course, real instruments, if you're not listening through a PA and you're listening to a piano or a drum kit, it's big and shrinking it down to, to get funneled out of a small speaker definitely has its consequences. So the, so the goal here is get as big as you can. And if you can't get big, hey, if, you're really, if your room is really small, as I said earlier, if your room is really small, don't get big speakers. I'm not suggesting that, not at all. I am suggesting if your room is really small, get closer to your speakers. Uh, get within five feet or four feet even try it see how much bigger they sound when you get close to a small speaker that's that's the workaround solution but where possible if you have a big room a big space and you've been living with speakers that are fairly small or skinny towers or something consider the upgrade consider the potential of moving to something as large as you can accommodate. And I'm not suggesting just large, I'm suggesting large of good quality, right? I'm not just saying big is automatically better, I'm saying big plus good quality of whatever you deem good quality to be, that's important too. I'm not, I'm not downplaying that, not at all. But size does matter. That is the literal bottom line here. And I'm, I made this video today to go against this, this tide of smaller and smaller and smaller speakers. So consider the possibilities. That's, that's the message here today, right? So it's about that time I'm supposed to say something like, hey, my name's Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And it's coming up five or six days a week right now. Check back often. Please subscribe. Hit that button right over there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. You can follow me on Instagram at Steve.Guttenberg. But you know what? Forget that for a second. While you're here on the Audiophiliac Daily Show channel, check out the playlist. There's playlists for speaker reviews and music reviews and headphone reviews and interviews with audio audiophile luminaries and plain folk all kinds of good stuff in those playlists, so check them out. And last, but certainly not least, check out my Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See you again real soon.